On this episode of Fish Girls, we took the rest of the flakes from the Kagami, made some katsu curry made by our very own Bobby, and we made some ceviche made by our very own James. Hope you all stick around. Stay tuned. Yes, up. This episode of So I've been browning the onions and I just entered in all my grated aromatics. Uh, I used ginger, carrots, uh, garlic, and some apple. Actually, that's a thing in Japanese uh, curry. Uh, commonly like apples or bananas, some kind of fruit usually for sweetness, along with the carrots. That's where you get that uh, distinctive flavor. So I'm letting this brown up a bit. Then I'm going to make the roux in a little bit. Over here I've got some uh, shiitake, dried shiitake mushrooms, fortifying my beef broth that's also going to go in the curry. So right now we're just rehydrating the uh, shiitake mushrooms and adding that umami flavor to the beef broth. Uh, so it will really level up the dish. So this is the new way caught this morning. I'm going to prep it and James. That's me. Um, he's going to make some ceviche for us for a side dish. So you want it to cover everything and then you let it sit for about an hour. Some people let it sit overnight, some people, you know, everybody has their own way of making it. But you'll know when it starts getting white and it shrinks, it'll become uh, edible. <laughs> So when it comes to curry, the easy way and perfectly fine way is to use those bouillon cubes you can buy uh, at the grocery store. There's nothing wrong with that. Today we're going to make one from scratch without the cube. 
We're using, uh, we're gonna make a spiced root. There's some curry powder, the SMB good old SMB curry powder, some garam masala, some Thai spices, some coriander, all in here. And we're just gonna heat this up with the butter and just constantly stir until we have a good spice root. That'll be the basis for the whole curry right there. And you just keep stirring with the butter and see the roux thickens up and yeah. There you have the basis of those little cubes that they sell in the supermarket. Homemade. Alright. Blend this whole thing, make it nice and smooth, and that's going to be our curry. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> and obviously, make sure your blender's all the way closed. <laughs> so right now, I'm just browning some extra carrots and onions, more for the presentation to beef up the curry a bit. Besides, um, after these brown, I'm going to pour in right now the uh, blended mixture of uh, this should be our curry here. Put it all together. It's a nice it's texture. Mm -hmm. Then we add back the shiitake mushrooms from earlier. And then we just kind of let it all cook together. Season salt, pepper, but other than that, that's pretty much a curry from scratch. There were a few things we missed here while in the cooking process that weren't filmed, so I just wanted to bring them up. Uh, while blending, I realized I had forgotten to add my tomato paste, so I'll, while blending and it was still hot, I added both tomato paste and butter. Uh, to help really help emulsify while the curry was still hot and being blended at the same time to really smooth out the texture and then bring that rich creaminess to the whole dish really brings it all together here okay is that like close to being a critical blow to the curry oh uh, what well, it, it really smoothed it out while blending like you could notice the difference a lot the flavor with the tomato paste and it does bring a lot to it so it's more of a fine touch kind of thing uh, it's a pretty common ingredient, the, the tomato paste. Uh, the butter, not so much. Not you know, some people are uh, different about the extra fats, but that extra flavor just really smooths everything out. Bring it all together. And where'd you learn how to add the butter? Uh, just been trial and error. I looked at other folks' recipes, and uh, yeah, I've just been making curry for some years now. So, <laughs> so now we're just tasting it as the uh, vegetables continue to soften. Just gotta check. Always good to check in and where we're at. Mm. Mm, it's coming along. Oh yeah, bye. That's legit curry. Thank you, sir. So this is the kakami mm -hmm. fillets that we start prepping for our kakami curry. slabs here we got the flour we're gonna put some eggs on it and then put it on the panko the panko 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 however you pronounce it and we'll go from there I'm gonna stir it real quick Uh, the curry's a little on the thick side, which 
um, some folks like or don't like. So we're going to thin this out and normally you can just add water. There's nothing wrong with just adding water. I prefer something with a little bit more flavor. And we're doing a dark Guinness. Guinness is a very dark stout loaded with nutrients and just a little will do, the, do it for you. You stir it in. Don't worry about the alcohol, that'll cook out. Um, even if, whether there's kids or anything like that, all, not that much alcohol in it, it'll cook right out through the dish. But as you can see, it thins the dish out nicely, bringing a different, more robust flavor. But again, it's perfectly fine if you prefer to use water. All right, and as you can see, we have that that just nice velvety, smooth texture that we're looking for in our curry today. I'm just gonna let that simmer down and uh, let the flavors coalesce, and we're gonna have a nice, perfect curry here. So this is the last of the flays. We're gonna get it set up and get everything else ready. And it's gonna be delicious. So there we go, we're now beginning the fry. We're making a fish katsu here that Caleb has graciously breaded and prepped for us. You always want to be careful not to overcrowd your pan. It's nice and hot. Let these go about a minute aside and turn them over. And we'll probably double fry these. We'll get the first one going down, fry number one. Just uh, get your yourself a nice little fry rack here. Let it cool down. Okay, so we've got most of our first batch fried up. It's cooled down. We're just about to throw it in for maybe another minute or two to get it second fry on, extra crispy. And yeah, we'll be ready to eat. Alright, so as you can see, this is our the second frying is complete. It's a nice, perfect golden brown. It's gonna be uh, give you a nice little crisp texture. And can't wait to eat it. Right, the food's almost ready, but I guess we kind of forgot the rice. So I'm gonna go out and get it. I'll be right back. So I took the fish out the freezer it was sitting for about an hour and a half. Some people go longer, some people go about an hour. You'll know when it gets wider and it, the fish does shrink when, it's, when it cooks. Um, these are some of the ingredients. I haven't cut everything up yet. I did put the cucumber in to soak with it, some of it, because it does change the flavor of some of the cucumber. It uh, gives it a different flavor, because this whole dish is simple, but it's about a combination of all the, the fresh flavors coming into so um, I'm gonna get finished cutting and then put it together. This is all ugly look. <laughs> so these are serrano peppers. They add a little bit of flavor. I cut them up like really, really fine. Like smaller than a grain of sand. Because it adds a flavor but you don't get that burst of hot to overcome the rest of the flavors. It kind of just floats in there. I'll do that a couple times because you want it to be somewhat hot. The key to everything is you have to think about it fitting on a tortilla chip. So I try to cut everything small enough to where you can get a couple different items because that's where the flavor comes from. A little bit of garlic salt. I did actually put a clove of garlic in there, cut it up real fine just for taste, because it's going to sit for a little bit afterwards just for those juices to kind of mix into each other. Um, I put a lot of salt, like almost ankle swelling salt amount because it helps the flavor. It really enhances the fish and the lemon. It kind of uh, takes it up over, so. Whatever you think is a lot of salt, just a little bit more than that. 
kosher salt. I do try to put it in pink Himalayan too. Good flavor, everything's balanced. Yeah, cooked, ready to go. Well, it's very good. Um, there's a few ways to eat it. Um, my favorite is just to put it in your face. Let it Good job, James. Delicious fish dishes. Mm -hmm. And this is our rice of shame. <laughs> this is your curry. Nice. That fish has a really nice crisp to it. Mm -hmm. And then you always finish it off. A little bit of green onion flavor. Who's getting first test? Don't forget the pickle ginger. Pickle ginger? Pickle ginger. Yeah, the classic it's... staple right here. We put in some work today. Came up with a delicious dish of curry and katsu with fish, rice, every all the fixings. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to eat. Favorite that is, is good. Flavor is great here. Wow. You just made up the fish, the balance. Well, that second fry was definitely worth it. That extra crisp uh, texture just goes so well with the curry. And of course, the rice. <laughs> Amazing. What? Uh, got it. Not good sign off. Fight. <laughs> Fight for the good beef. Mm. <laughs> I'm watching this guy die, and now I'm nervous. I ate, ate it wrong. Because I'm, I'm so weak when it comes to spice. It's so good. Nah, he's good. Mmm. Mmm. Just don't breathe. Good. <laughs> so good. Eat some rice, eat some rice with it. Oh god, it's so spicy. The rice is good. <laughs> Eat the rice. Ugh. That's good. <laughs> I just got too excited and I inhaled and it went down the wrong pipe for me. It tastes good though, I like the flavor. <laughs> you, know, you really do have to just put more, more rice, it'll be fine. This is one of my favorite dishes. Last time we had the Kala Katsu Curry, this time it's the Kagami Katsu Curry. Same, same, but different. There's nothing on the board. <laughs> Thank y'all for sticking around. We had a blast. That's some good times, some good grinds with good people. And as always, stay tuned for the next episode of Fishing Grills. Cut. Whenever you're ready. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> What's happening here? <laughs> Thank you all for sticking around. We had a blast. <laughs> Three, two. Thank you all for sticking around. We had a blast. And as always. <laughs> <laughs>